Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy this watch, for once, we're not talking pre-owned. We're actually a dealer of these, an authorized dealer on the Govberg side of the company. So if you're interested in a new purchased Devon Tread with warranty, give me a ring. T Mosso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below as your hookup for a new Devon Tread 1 or Tread 2. Okay, without further delay, let's talk about the watch we have here today. This is actually a manufacturer's sample that was sent to me at my request by Devon Works of Pasadena, California, who are incredibly accommodating to requests. And the timepiece is the second generation Tread. So the Tread 2, this is the Godiva model. Uh, launched in 2014, the timepiece is exactly what you suspect. It is a Godiva chocolate-inspired chronograph, regulator, power reserve, digital display. It is all of those things in a stainless steel brown PVD tonneau case. So the watch is dedicated to chocolates, and if you're looking for the perfect Valentine's gift, I have to recommend this. Longer lasting than chocolate and less fattening, this is the answer to your Valentine's Day quandary. See, you even get relationship counseling on this channel. I always offer more. So let's talk about the basic features of this watch, starting with the way it fits. Compared to the Tread 1, the tonneau case seems almost petite. Not to say this is a small watch. From side to side, the steel PVD case is 41.5 millimeters. From lug to lug across the wrist, it's 56.3 millimeters, and then it's not as thick as you think. At 15.3, it's actually thinner than Planet Ocean GMTs or chronographs, and this is a chronograph. Taking a quick look at the hardware and the software, the strap against all appearances is in fact an embossed calfskin that creates this fascinating alligator leather scale pattern. It is thickly bolstered. You're getting a lot of high quality leather here. You can see it actually tapers to match the swell of the case as well as the swell of the lug profile. So the strap's made in Arizona. It's custom cut for Devon. 80% of the watch is US cons tent and this is a US made custom strap that is built just for Devon. They also have custom straps on the Tread 1 from the same supplier. So it's calfskin on the top, it's calfskin on the bottom, and then we have a lovely little buckle here that is a bespoke piece. You can see it's anything but a default design. It too is that lovely brown bronze PVD used on the case, but you have polish for the pin and then satin for the buckle for a nice contrast. This is a well-worn press piece, so keep in mind some of the tarnish you see is my fingerprints, some of it is just from life on the road. The finished product as delivered OEM is much, much finer. Uh, the timepiece, of course, has a remarkable tonneau form that's both more compact than the original Tread 1 and more versatile in terms of who can wear it. Now, you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, this watch is far more compact than the enormous gauntlet-like Tread 1. You can see from over the top, it doesn't approach the edge of my wrist. I've actually got clearance on the edges, and you can see how the strap flares out in this down the barrel shot. Let me remove my sleeve so you can get a better view of it. It's not super thin, but it isn't terribly thick either. It will slide underneath jacket cuffs. So if you're looking for a Devon to wear in polite company, this is definitely the one. Not just because it's a bit more discreet, not discreet, but more discreet, but also because even in jumping seconds mode, or when the hour and the minute turn, this is a much quieter watch than the original Tread 1. Now taking a quick look one more time, I can recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. So if you have a lady fan of Devon watches, this is the best option right here. Now taking a quick look at the case itself, there's a contrast between the elements that are polished and the elements that are satin finished. So attention to detail is rife in this design. And you can see that there's a little bit of an overrider at each end to better keep the strap planted and localized. It basically holds it in place. You can also see that screws are used and they're used as a styling element as well as a functional element. Two firsts with this watch. The first Devon watch to have a rated water resistance. The Tread 1 was moisture and dust only. And it's also the first Devon watch to feature a sapphire crystal. The Tread 1 featured plexiglass because of the sheer expanse of the crystal across the dial. So you have here your sapphire that's scratch resistant, your water resistant case, though not recommended for swimming. And then you have a fascinating system that's actually inspired by custom knives and high-end tactical gear. You've got a button and then you've got a lever. The button and the lever actuate all the functions of the watch. But before we jump into that, well, heck no, let's jump into it.
When you actuate the watch, it will jump to the current time. The microprocessor inside always remembers the time to the second. Now, if I were to press the button again, I turn it all off, and the watch, which you'll note is a regulator with separate hours and minutes, goes into power reserve mode. So off is a standby mode, and the watch can be on standby for about 21 days between charging. You can see right now the power reserve indicator is planted spot on one. Now here's one, here's zero. Zero would mean the watch is fully discharged, zero five means half, and one is complete. So the timepiece will charge in about four hours, but I find you can get about an 80% charge in two hours. It's a lithium ion battery, and it charges inductively, which means it sits on a charger, and it charges wirelessly. Uh, the timepiece will run for about seven to 10 days. Uh, you might get as much as 14 if you don't use the chronograph a lot, and you don't use the constant seconds mode. Now the watch, as you can see, features a constant seconds mode, but you do lose the minutes display. You have the hour and you have the constant seconds. Hey, let's listen to this for a moment. You can hear it. It has a pronounced voice. So if your objection to quartz watches is that they don't have a distinct mechanical heartbeat, well, this watch is surprisingly mechanical and it absolutely has a heartbeat. We'll let this run for a moment. I should also mention that you have all this lovely anodized gold, motor one, motor two, two belts. They are nylon reinforced with fiberglass, and the belts themselves come from analog instrumentation in aircraft. So this is no longer used in glass cockpit environments, but this old analog instrumentation, rather than, for example, demonstrating your flight statistics or your momentary rates or absolutes, it's now a timing organ in the Devon watch, and it's the same aerospace suppliers who built the original belts. Fun fact, this is what Devon calls vintage white. It's a sort of off-white with a bit of a, I guess a bit of a fade, and it actually matches nicely to the subdued tones of the Godiva edition. Now the belts. How on earth does it manage to locate directly on the index every time? Well, there are optical sensors inside the case, and in conjunction with the microprocessor, they ensure that the index is always located precisely when meeting out the seconds or the minutes. And this is something that quartz watches historically have not done well. Devon solved that problem by combining the microprocessor with a scanner that allows the watch to know physically where the belt is and therefore always locate the index perfectly. Now, there's more to the watch than that. It is thermocompensated, so if you've heard of quartz thermocompensation, then you know what it is. It's a system that allows the watch to maintain consistent timekeeping, even in hot or cold weather. It's a premium feature. It's rarely seen on quartz watches, and it does add to the price, but at a retail price of about $12,500, the Devon Tread 2 can accommodate the cost of thermocompensation. You'll see it in better quartz calibers, like the ETA thermal lines used in the Breitling Aerospaces, or in the old Rolex Oyster Quartz, which was always thermal compensated. A little bit more fun facts. The CNC steel wheels underneath the belt actually have ruby rollers, and those ruby rollers are designed to operate unlubricated. Although the watch can be serviced, and Devon turnarounds typically take about one to two weeks, which is mind-blowing by the standards of luxury watches built in other countries. Uh, nevertheless, there are some Tread 1s that have been around since 2010 that have never been serviced and have never needed it. The watch is not designed to require regular trips back to the factory, and the battery is considered to be usable for 300 cycles or more, and some have had up to 500 cycles of charging and recharging. Those are the watches that have been out since their manufacture in 2010 and have not yet been back to Devon. So that's something to think about when buying a watch. You don't have to factor in $1,500 worth of maintenance every three to five years. Now, there's a lot more to say about this watch, but I think I should mention that the timepiece, in addition to being a regulator, a power reserve, and a thermocompensated super quartz, it's also a chronograph, which distinguishes it from the original Tread 1. You simply push the lever down and pull it up, and that puts it in chronograph mode. And this is your minute, this is your second. It looks like a mono pusher because you just have that one trigger. But unlike a mono pusher, for example, you do have the ability to stop and then restart. Now you might note, since this is the minutes display, you're going to be timing intervals of 12 minutes or less. So that's important to keep in mind, but it still remains quite useful for most timing assignments, as for the most part, I time very short intervals with my chronographs. Now you can see, just like that, I reset. I stop and I push the lever down. 
I pull the lever up, and now it is back into time-telling mode. Uh, this is a watch that defies easy description. It's a timepiece that is just a ton of fun. It is resolutely American. It is not a discrete timepiece. No one would call it a refined manner, uh, in the sense that a ultra-thin Chagère Le Coult is a refined timepiece. But it is technically refined, even if it is boisterous and irreverent in spirit. This is a watch that offers a lot of technical interest, and it is unerringly accurate. I actually measured both this and the Tread 1 Devin sent me, and I found that both of them are on track to be inaccurate by a margin of somewhere between 10 and 15 seconds a year, which is also to say, conversely, they are accurate to within 10 to 15 seconds a year, and that is far more than Devin promised. Uh, that is as good as the best Super Quartz calibers, and it's in the running with the best Quartz watches in the world. So this is a timepiece that is all about the feel the techie appeal, the fact that it can be firmware updated when it goes back for service to gain actual new capabilities and functionality, and Devin has made some uh, some upgrades in that regard. There are firmware updates for the watches, so as they get older, they actually get better, and you can't really say that about too many watches. You can say that about Tesla cars, but it's rare to say that about a watch. This is a timepiece that is different from anything else in the luxury space, and frankly, you're gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. There is no middle ground. I, however, am in love. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.